Hello friends, this is Kyle the Vegan Jedi on behalf of Project Animal Freedom coming to you live from the world's first international coordinated campaign that dramatizes the connection between animal exploitation and pandemic diseases like COVID-19. A single species is responsible for pandemics, humans. Our love for meat and disrespect of nature is what drives zoonotic diseases. Diseases that originate in other animals and spread to humans. Diseases such as SARS, bird flu, swine flu, mad cow disease, Ebola, HIV, measles, smallpox, Spanish flu, and COVID-19. Our governments, the media, and the public are ignoring the source of deadly pandemics we are seeing time and time again across the planet. We need to connect the dots between meat production and zoonotic diseases. Every year we slaughter over 70 billion land animals and over 2 trillion sea animals. According to scientists, zoonotic diseases have become four times more frequent in the past 50 years, about the same length of time factory farms have existed. Whether a wet market or farm, thousands of highly stressed animals with weakened immune systems living in cramped and filthy conditions it's the perfect breeding ground for viruses to flourish, mutate, and jump to humans. These animals are not social distancing. What can we do? We can adopt a plant-based diet and help others to do the same. And we call upon our governments to discontinue the raising of animals for food and fashion, to divert animal agriculture subsidies to plant-based agriculture instead, provide support to farmers to transition to plant-based alternatives, to ban live animal markets, to end wildlife tracking, to curb deforestation, and to adopt a One Health approach for the planet, animals, and humans. All the masks, hand washing, vaccinations, and social distancing, and hand sanitizer in the world will not prevent the next and potentially much, much worse pandemic. No one wants to go through this again, we miss our loved ones, our routines, and our freedom. Animal agriculture is a ticking time bomb. Before it blows up again, let's take pandemics off the menu. I would like to give you a brief glimpse to the activists we have assembled today for this historic international event taking place in over 50 cities. Here's a sign about COVID-19, the 2020 pandemic. Who knows when the next pandemic will be, but it will most likely be the result of our treatment of more than human animals. Ebola 1976 came from bats. Avian flu 2013 came from raising, confining, slaughtering, and eating chickens. And most importantly of all, this is not a drill. This is not a drill. We are just one pandemic away from societal collapse, just one pandemic away. And we are here today to raise awareness about these issues and to prevent future pandemics because it's only a matter of time before a pandemic. As transmissible as the flu, as the common cold, and as deadly as Ebola emerges. In fact, there was an outbreak of avian flu last April during the COVID-19 pandemic uh, um, in a, a factory farm in North Carolina. And that version of the bird flu, that strain, could have killed 30 to 60% of the world population if it became a full-blown pandemic. Fortunately, it was contained, but as long as we raise and confine and slaughter billions of animals for food and other unnecessary purposes every year, it is only a matter of time before another pandemic strikes again. Without further ado, I'd like to hand this over to some of our activists who will be reading additional information for you to absorb, starting with John. Okay. No, that's the wrong page. This page? No. First page? First page, the bottom. Okay. This isn't our first pandemic. And if we don't transition from our broken animal-based food system, it won't be our last. COVID-19 is merely a dress rehearsal for future global zoonotic disease outbreaks. Zoonotic diseases are diseases that originate in other animals and spread to humans. Well-known examples are SARS, avian, bird flu, 
swine flu, mad cow disease, Ebola, HIV, measles, smallpox, the Spanish flu, and of course, COVID-19. Dr. Gordon, Gordon Galea from the World Health Organization warns, so long as people eat meat, there is going to be some risk of infection. The World Health Organization also says that three out of four emerging diseases are zoonotic in nature. It is vital that the public understands that we are already breeding the next pandemic somewhere on our planet. There is a single species responsible for the current pandemic, us humans. Although convenient to blame COVID-19 on bats, pangolins, and other wildlife, human behavior is largely responsible for the increase in pathogens that jump the species barrier from animals to humans. Viruses are without borders or nationalities. More than 90% of the deaths since 1900 have come from zoonotic diseases that did not originate in Asia. The 1918-1919 Spanish flu that killed 50 million people was also zoonotic in origin and has now been traced back to an animal farm in the United States. Swine flu, avian slash bird flu, and mad cow disease are present on animal farms all around the world all the time. Just in the past year, swine flu has passed to humans in Canada and China. Bird flu was once a very rare disease among chickens, but today outbreaks are occurring annually. It has recently jumped to chicken farm workers in Russia and was found in wild and domesticated birds in a dozen other countries and mad cow disease has been found in cows in Ireland, Spain, and Canada. Our governments, the media, and the public are ignoring the source of the deadly epidemics and pandemics we are seeing time and time again across the planet. We, as concerned citizens, feel obliged to speak up and connect the dots between meat production and the resultant zoonotic diseases. Our animal-based food system leaves us vulnerable and greatly contributes to the risk of another widespread public health crisis and economy-crippling pandemic. We need to address the root cause, not merely depend on a vaccine, which only deals with the present infection, not future outbreaks and mutation. Our next speaker is Gabe. diseases annually infect 2.5 billion people and kill millions. According to scientists, zoonotic diseases have become four times more frequent in the past 50 years. About the same length of time, factory farms have existed. Our current food system is failing us. Louder. Causing worldwide physical, emotional, and economic fallout with no truly efficient way to mitigate future danger. Worldwide, we slaughter over 70 million animals raised for food, no matter where we live in the world. When we bring together terrified animals with weakened immune systems in large numbers, disease follows. It's a ticking time bomb. Whether a wet market or a barn, where there are many thousands of highly stressed animals living side by side or on top of one another in cramped and filthy conditions, we have the perfect breeding grounds for viruses to flourish, mutate, and as we've seen with COVID-19, jump to humans. Modern farming practices force humans, Louder. farmed animals, and viruses together in an unprecedented way. All farms, be they small and family run, or large industrial complexes keep animals in confined spaces where diseases can spread easily. These animals are not social distancing. Free range or regenerative agriculture is not the answer. 
ending factory farming and producing the same number of animals as we do now, now on smaller farms isn't the answer. This will actually use more land, encroaching even more in the habitat of wild animals, bringing our domesticated animals and ourselves in closer proximity with wild animals, thus increasing our risk of spillover viruses slash pathogens. Because they don't address the fundamental underlying causes, wearing masks, hand washing, and getting vaccination cannot prevent the next and potentially worse outbreak. Imagine a zoonotic pathogen that is both highly contagious and fatal. Given the intensive manner in which we farm animals for human consumption, this is a very real possibility. The COVID-19 death rate is 1-2%. to 2 Louder game and more passionately. Yeah. Louder game. The H5N1 slash bird flu spilled over into the human population. Scientists estimate it could kill between 30 to 60 percent of the people it infects. Around the globe, taxpayer dollars are used to prop up and expand the current broken animal based food system. We have the solution to prevent future epidemics and pandemics. As concerned citizens, we call upon our government bodies to have the foresight and wisdom to address the fundamental underlying causes of epidemics and pandemics. We must discontinue the raising of animals for food and fashion, ban live animal markets, begin to repair our relationship with the natural world, stop subsidizing animal agriculture, invest in a safer, more sustainable and resilient food system, promote and subsidize plant-based food and sell cultured animal products, curb deforestation and wildlife trafficking, Provide support to farmers to transition to plant-based alternatives. Implement a global One Health approach as envisioned by the World Health Organization. The United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization and the World Health Organization for Animal Health. I think Ellipse is, is more appropriate than because the camera here implies the, it's the World Organization for Animal Health that is a collaborative effort, a collaborative effort to attain optimal health for people, animals, and our environment. And the simplest, most important thing we can all do, adopt a plant-based diet. It's the only food system that makes sense for human health and the survival of all other life on the planet. No one wants to go through this. Finish Gabe Finish. and move to the public sidewalk. We're tired of wearing masks and having our movements restricted. We miss our loved ones, our routines, and our freedom. Our food choices need not contribute to the risk of a public health crisis. We must stop ignoring the virus-shaped elephant in the room and be part of the solution. Let's take pandemics off our plate. Thank you so very much, Gabe. Thank you, John, and thank you all the activists who have not only joined us today, but who are participating in this, the first international coordinated campaign to dramatize the connection between animal exploitation and pandemic diseases like COVID-19. As we have mentioned several times, it's only a matter of time before a disease as transmissible as the common flu, but as deadly as Ebola comes about. As I've already mentioned, there have been outbreaks even during the COVID-19 pandemic of various strains of the bird flu. One such being in a chicken farm in North Carolina. 
Had that virus escaped, it could have killed up to 30 to 60% of the infected human population. We are playing Russian roulette with three out of four slots filled with bullets. We are playing Russian roulettes with our lives, with the lives of our non-human animal victims, and with the lives of future generations. It is completely unacceptable. We need to transition to a plant-based food system and end the profound threat that factory farms, fur farms, fish farms, and other animal inst abusing institutions pose to public health. Please join us in Eating Animals Causes Pandemics as we fight to raise awareness about the insidious connection between intensive animal confinement and pandemic diseases from COVID-19 to HIV to Ebola to SARS to MERS to countless others. What are you waiting for? The next pandemic is just around the corner if we don't take action. Thank you very much. This is Kyle the Vegan Jedi on behalf of Project Animal Freedom signing out.